Yes, people, what's going on? We're back. Back after another, another brilliant performance against West Ham. And I can't lie, yeah, I am happy that we have battered these lot. Battered these lot. Because recently, they've had, they've been talking so much, these West Ham fans. I swear to God. You know what I'm saying? Their little, their little uh, win, European win last season, got them gassed. I've got a lot of West Ham friends, because I, I come from East. I live in East, yeah? So I know a lot of West Ham people. Do you know what I'm saying? Lawless being one of them, yeah? And this guy was just talking and talking and talking. Oh, there's no way that Chelsea are going to finish above us. Oh, our team is better than yours. You know, complaining about Moyes, but then still having all this confidence in his team to finish above Chelsea. And at the time, I was humble. Yeah, I was humble. I said, you know what? I can't even trust these men because the players are moving mad inconsistent. Poch don't want to set them up correctly. So I was like, we'll see. Every time he kept saying it, I said, listen, we shall see. A few weeks have passed. He started to change his mind about a few things. He's feeling less confident. I've been asking him, will Chelsea, sorry, will West Ham finish above Chelsea? And this brother cannot answer the question. Do you know what I'm saying? So he can hold that. And I'm going to give him a serious cooking on Wednesday as well. Yeah, he just got a serious cooking from D. If you look, look into This Is London on Posse Channel, Big Up Pots, yeah? He got a serious cooking from D because they got smoked by Palace and we smoked them 5-0. Smoked them 5-0. I probably think, for me, looking at this game today, I'll probably say it was our best performance of the season. Best performance of the season, man. You know? Because Cucurella inverting has absolutely transformed this team. Absolutely transformed this team. And we were actually seeing this in pre-season. That's why, as Chelsea fans, we're disgruntled. We've been disgruntled all season because, listen... We understand that these guys are not world-class level. We know that these men, most of these guys wouldn't be starting for Chelsea that we grew up on. But at the end of the day, the reality is they are Chelsea players. And this manager hasn't been helping them enough. Do you know what I'm saying? Has not been helping them enough. And today is another example of what happens when you set your team up correctly. Your team will play better, which in return should mean that you're winning more games. Is what I was saying all season. You know, people kept telling me, nah, just give this guy time. You know, the players need to gel. And I told them from summer, I said, we're not going to build no chemistry, no cohesion, nothing playing like this. Yeah, because we're just, we're just playing too many people out of position. And these are young players. Do you know what I mean? We're playing people in positions where they're not comfortable, right? And we're a one-man team. We are Palmer FC. That's what I kept saying. And we won't be a team until we start being set up like a team. Do you know what I mean? Another brilliant performance from Cucurella today, man. Amazing. Amazing. Do you know what I'm saying? But just to go through the game, I thought, you know, initially, I was seeing us getting on the ball quite a bit. We we're looking very aggressive. To be fair, like the first, first few chances that we had in the attack, we kept breaking down our chances. Like Palmer, he was getting the ball a few times, but he wasn't making that final pass. Um, Madweki as well, like he would get the ball, but then wouldn't make that final pass. So I was thinking, oh, come on. We need to just make sure that we, we're, we're a little bit more more killers in front of goal because that's been our big problem this season. You know, we get the chances or we get in good positions, but then we constantly break down our own attacks. Do you know what I'm saying? We need a little bit more quality up there. But what I really liked was that we we kept maintaining the pressure. Kept maintaining the pressure. And the big reason why is because every single time the ball kept coming back into the midfield, Cucurella is helping to sweep it up. There's not that much space in the midfield. He's helping condense the midfield and compress it. You know, sweeping it up. Second ball is getting on it, popping it off again. We're just recycling the ball constantly. And what I really liked about that first half is was using both sides. Mudrik was getting on the ball quite a bit. Madweki was getting on the ball, was rotating it between Jackson and him. Um, Palmer and, and um, Madweki as well. I like the little rotations they've got on that right-hand side. One second, you see Palmer um, on the right, then you see Madweki in between the lines. And then again, you see Palmer on the right. Sorry, Palmer in between the lines. And you see Madweki um, holding that width. So it's really good to see, man. And you can clearly see these guys are quite confident at the minute and you can clearly see that there's a lot of chemistry in the team because they're comfortable in how they're playing and it's actually helping us play better and like I said score more goals do you know what I'm saying and for that first goal there was a clear pattern that happened for that first goal the ball went out to Madweki he puts it into the box a little bit of a scrap there in the box but then Palmer you know instinct straight away left foot finish you know that's what I want to see just put your foot through the ball do you know what I'm saying yeah nice nice finish there for him good goal bruv good goal you had Caicedo going through the midfield today, just getting the ball. And that's what I keep saying to people. For me, this guy's best position is going to be as a box-to-box, -box, as an eight. Because he's got the legs to do it. And counter-pressing, he's going to be dangerous. We're going to, we're going to start to score a lot more goals where we're just pressing from the front. And Caicedo's there to just 
find that final pass. So we'll talk about the last goal that was scored today because he was he played a big part in that. But he was very good just picking up the ball and, like I said, running through the midfield. He was he was quite dangerous, um, quite dangerous at doing that, you know. And what I really liked as well when was playing out and building from the back. Badia Shield today, colossal performance, colossal performance from this guy. This is the Badia Shield that I was seeing last season. As much of uh, as much as I've come on here criticizing him and saying, yeah, we, we can't be starting him right now. Start Chalaban, start Thiago Silva. For me, Badia Shield starts in my strongest lineup with everyone fit. And this is why. Composed on the ball, aggressive in, in, in his in his um in his challenges, getting straight onto the man, not letting them give have any space. What I was seeing early on in the season was he was too he, he, he was thinking in two minds, like, should I go? Should I stay? You know? But now that he's got players that are closer to him, he's feeling more comfortable to go in there and be a little bit more aggressive because he knows that if if he's not able to get the ball, Cucurella's right there and can help him. Or Silva's right there and he can help him and he's got a lot more experience. You know what I'm saying? Playing it into the midfield. He was very good at doing that today as well. I don't think he he, he misplaced a pass today, to be honest with you. Um, the amount of passes that I was seeing him just playing it to Gallagher, playing it to Cucurella, playing it to all these guys into the midfield, Palmer. Do you know what I'm saying? Excellent performance from him. Silva, as always, clearing the ball. No nonsense. That's where it is with Silva. No nonsense. No dilly-dallying. Really, really good from the back. Chalaber as well. Another solid performance. And he was playing out of position. Up against a guy right now, Kudus, who has got one of the best attack uh, in terms of take-ons. I think he's, 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 he's completed the most take-ons in the whole league. So that's not an easy guy to mark. I know West Ham are low block central, but they were getting in good areas and good positions, but Chalaba was holding his own. Do you know what I'm saying? He was good as well. So again, that's a foundation to build from. When your defence are looking stable like they did today, that allows the midfield to have more confidence because they, they don't feel like what's behind them is panicking. You know, it, it makes everyone just relax and it makes everyone just play their game and do what they need to do to go and win the game. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm very, very happy with the defence at the minute. Very, very happy with the defence at the minute. And I, I don't want to see the Sarsi and, and Badia Shield pair, pairing up again because those two, I, I call them the cramp twins, yeah? Reminds me of Christensen and, and Zuma when they used to play together. Right now, don't change what, what's working at the minute, innit? Don't change what's working at the minute. Do you know what I'm saying? And what I really liked as well, today, Madwaki, when he was getting on the ball, do you know what I'm saying? Trying to pop off some shots, you know? That's what we need to be seeing from outside the box. Not everything needs to be walked into. I don't need you to walk into walk it into the goal. Sometimes just shoot from outside the box. You never know. The keeper might scuff it. The keeper might hit it out. And then Jackson can just get, uh, um, a, uh, get his foot on it. Gallagher might get his foot on it. Palmer might get his foot on it. It might deflect off a defender. You won't know until you shoot, unless you shoot. Do you know what I'm saying? And he was creating some, some good spaces for himself today. Do you know what I'm saying? So I thought Madweki had another good game. Another good game, man. He was good. Um, Palmer. Listen, this is the Palmer that I love. This is the Palmer that I love. Getting involved in the game. The past two games, I haven't really seen him getting involved. I know he's been ill. Maybe he hasn't been feeling 100%. But today, this is the Cole Palmer that I like, bro. Just getting in between the lines. Punching it. Punching it into, into, the, into his teammates. And that's what he did for the second goal as well. He punched it straight into Madweki. Yeah? And it bounced off the defender and it went to Gallagher. Top finish from Gallagher to just bang it like that on the volley. Do you know what I'm saying? But that came from Palmer just fizzing it through the lines. And that's what I like him doing. That's why I prefer him playing centrally. Because for me, those little passes, intricate passes, the IQ is spot on. His weight of pass is always spot on. Always spot on. Obviously, when you get those sort of passes, you need to be on your toes. But when you're playing with a player like Palmer, it's going to make you want to up your game because you can see the quality is there. Do you know what I'm saying? So another, another brilliant performance from him, man. I'm going to go through some of the stats after because, like I said, today, going back to front, I, I can pick out so many people, so many people that played well today. Do you know what I'm saying? I think, listen, with, with, with Mudrik, he was getting involved in the game a lot more um, in, in that first half. I thought he was actually decent. Um, in the second half, not so much. What I've realised about that left-hand side, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit lopsided. Um, we do a lot of build-up on that side, but he doesn't really hug the touchline, which... To me, is a bit confusing because one of his main strengths is his pace. Do you know what I'm saying? He can get in behind, but then you've got him coming closer to the play and you know getting the ball from from the midfield rather than actually touching the touchline like Madueke does. So I think that's more of a of an instruction from Poch rather than Mudrik not trying to run in behind. I, I barely ever see that left hand side overlapping. It mainly comes from the right. So to me, I think that's more of a structure thing. I, I do want to see see him going behind a lot more. Um, and I thought today he had a, he had a decent game. Um, nothing to slander, to be honest. If I see anyone slandering Mudrik today, then I don't know, innit? Um, he could have scored, to be fair. Um, who was it that slipped him through? 
uh, Palmer. Palmer slipped him through. Like, yeah, amazing pass from Palmer. And he could have scored if he had a little bit more composure. Or he could have just slipped it to Jackson, like what Madweki did. Um, you know what I'm saying? For the for the, for the the fourth goal, you know? I thought that third goal was good from him as well. The header that he scored, Madweki, the third goal was good. Really nice to just anticipate that. That's what I want to see in and around the box. Be ready for anything to just fall to you. Do you know what I'm saying? That fourth goal, Chalabar. Yeah, I've been talking about this guy's ball playing ability. That is, it's not the greatest. Do you know what I mean? But listen, since he's been back from this injury, I don't know if you've been watching videos of Desarcy on the ball when he, when he just plays it into the midfield. Yo, that pass was A1. A1. He skipped through the whole midfield, threw ball straight to Jackson. Sorry, straight to Madweki. And Madweki, amazing there to just compose yourself, you know, not, not be selfish in that position. Because he could have scored, to be fair, if he just bended it around the keeper. But he said, you know what? I'd rather just make sure that I get the goal just to wrap up the game completely. Do you know what I mean? Because it weren't, it weren't long ago when we were beating Luton 3-0 and these lot came back. Do you know what I'm saying? So it was nice for him to just play up Jackson. Jackson scored his 12th goal. And then for the fifth goal, you know, Caicedo again running through the midfield and then just plays it, plays it to Jackson. Good, good little bit of, of movement from him as well. And a little bit of composure because usually you just see Jackson run and not check the line. But today he actually made sure that he checked the line. What I was seeing him doing in pre-season you know, and it was a, it was a nice little finish, a little nice nice one on one finish because most of his one on ones that ja that Jackson gets, usually he he just fluffs it. Do you know what I'm saying? He makes the hard stuff look good, like what he did against Everton, but in the easy opportunities he misses them. And I'll be real, like if this guy was serious, this guy would definitely be on more than 20 goals this season. It's crazy because right now he's sitting on 13, and he's missed over 20 25 chances or something ridiculous like that. Big chances as well. Do you know what I mean? But listen, I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm happy with his first season because for him to be doing this in his debut season, he's what, 22? There's a lot of improving to do, a lot of learning to do. Right now, we're still playing with, with like our B, B team, if you want to call it that. So listen, there's, there's more to come from him in there. I've got a lot of time from him, a lot of time for him. Do you know what I'm saying? But let's go through some of these stats, man, because like I said today, it was just an amazing performance from, from everyone, bro. From everyone, yeah? Madweki registered more chance creations than any player on the pitch. Six. So he registered six chances today. Yeah. Cucurella, more successful tackles, more than West Ham and obviously Chelsea. Um, who else have you got here? Uh, uh, Caicedo registered more successful passes, more successful take-ons. Um, four out of four. Crazy. He was just running. Like I said, this is what I'm saying. My eyes are not lying to me. I could see him running through the midfield and trying to take guys on. Do you know what I mean? And in that first half, what really impressed me as well, like I said, because we're playing as a team, four Chelsea players created two chances for their teammates inside the first 45 minutes. So Gallagher created three chances. Madweki created three chances. Palmer created two chances. And Mudrik uh, created two. Thiago Silva created one. Do you know what I mean? And like I said, this I'm not surprised by this because football is not rocket science. Football is not rocket science. If you give guys a platform where they can learn and actually improve and perform better, this is what happens. The, the team gets more confident. Guys will feel more comfortable in front of goal. People at the back are not going to be panicking as much because, the, like I said, the team as a whole is comfortable. So I'm not surprised that X amount of players were creating some chances and getting on the ball in the first half because we're not we're not playing like we need to be dependent on Palmer at the minute. As much as he was good, everyone else around him was good as well because of how we were set up. Do you know what I'm saying? So listen, this win today, it takes us up to, uh, up to seventh. <laughs> so we're actually above United at the minute and um, United have a have a difficult game up against so we're eighth now no sorry we are seventh yeah we're on 54 points we've got 10 more 10 more goals than, than United listen these men don't score that many goals I'm not, I'm not even trying to jinx it at the minute I don't think they've even scored five goals once under Ten Hag so it's going to take us conceding a lot of goals in this shape which I don't see right and for them to score a lot of goals which they've, they've struggled to do all season so goal difference wise we're doing them at the minute. Do you know what I'm saying? And like I said, we're on 54 points at the minute. They're below us. They've got Palace tomorrow. But at the minute, Palace are playing some good football, man. Glasner's got them cooking over there. And Olise, Eze, Mateta, that attack's looking good. You've got um, Adam Wharton in the midfield as well. He balled out when we played Blackburn that time. He's a good player. So, listen, Palace away, it's not going to be easy for them. I know United are a buky team. They're, they're just weird, man. They can they, they can get pammed the whole game, but then they just they just get a, a, get a win out of a moment of brilliance. You know, but hopefully tomorrow Glasner deals with them because right now Palace are looking like a better team and he's only been there for two seconds. Do you know what I'm saying? That's why I, I keep talking about the coaching. No one can try to gaslight me and say these men are just bad players, right? You've got to look at the manager for how he's been setting us up 
And now he decides to fix up when he's under pressure. Surprise, surprise, the team plays better. Do you know what I'm saying? But listen, it's nice. Nice win, man. I can't even lie. Um, I'm happy with that. This is this is all I ask for from these men. You know, I'm, I'm about to go tune in and watch the Liverpool Spurs match. Now I can do that in peace. You know what I'm saying? But we've got the job done, man. But listen, people, <laughs> as always, making sure that you smash up the likes. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, as always. But listen, top six, we're coming, bruv. We need to push for this one, yeah? And Lawless, West Ham, you man can hold that. Hold that, yeah? <laughs> in a bit, people. Love.